Last year, we took up the challenge to help two couples make two big moves. In Norwich, we had some first-time buyers who were lovebirds but worry warts. Oh, Helen, don't! It's going to be OK. It's going to be fine. And in Sutton Coldfield, we were charged with helping a young family move in with Mum. Would you move in with your mother-in-law? Now, that is a tough question. <laughs> if I could buy the house next door, possibly. Twelve months on, we're back to see how they're getting on. I took paper off walls, I glossed, I peed in a bucket, we had no loo. <laughs> Twelve months ago, we took on two desperate house hunters in two different locations with two very different briefs. They had one thing in common, though. They were both in dire need of our help. Our search targeted two property hotspots, Sutton Coalfield to the north of Birmingham and Norwich at the heart of Norfolk. So two search areas, both with highly competitive markets and their own unique problems. Our first set of house hunters were Debs and Hardeep Burmy, a happy young family on the verge of a life-changing move. Hardeep's mum was moving in, so three generations to keep happy. Easy, right? Living with your mother and living with your mother-in-law is never the easiest thing to do, but be good for the kids. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Debbie will get used to it in the end. The Burmese situation is increasingly common. The only way many people can afford the right house is to pitch in together and buy as an extended family. Three generations all living under the same roof is predicted to triple in the next 20 years. I realise it's not going to be a bed of roses and I realise there's going to be rows, etc, that sort of thing. But hopefully we'll just have to learn to, to live together. Hardeep's mum lives on her own at the moment, but now needs a little more care. Moving with Hardeep and Debs to their new home will offer her all the support she needs, and the proceeds from the sale of her house will go towards their new and larger, all-singing, all-dancing, family-friendly house. So, one big house for one big extended family. A piece of cake. Well, it would be if only they could agree where they wanted it. Sutton Coldfield's my preferred choice. I think you get value for your money in Sutton Coldfield. Um, for our budget, I think we're going to get the, possibly the house of our dreams, of, you know, touch wood. Uh, Debbie's mum lives in Harborne, and Harborne is definitely Debbie's choice. To the north of the city centre is Hardeep's choice, Sutton Coldfield. It offers real value for money, great schools and beautiful houses. Debbie's family live to the south in Harbour. It's got a deservedly upmarket reputation and there lies the snag. The average price for a detached house here last year was almost double that of Sutton Coalfield. This search boils down to three things. Psychology, psychology and psychology. Hardeep's an accountant and he's thinking with his head for Sutton. You certainly get more for your money, but poor old Debs will be facing life in an unfamiliar area living with her mother-in-law. You guys have got quite a long wish list. Just run through it for me and try, if possible, to start with the most important and go down. Um, I think the most important is the space. Four bedrooms. Yeah. Definitely. But also where it is. I've done a lot into looked a lot into this that the schools are pretty good there. Okay, yeah. so size, location, catchment area. Absolutely. Yes. No, it's not just a three part wish list. Come on. No, there's not, there's more. Um, we don't want to be on a busy road as well, wherever it happens to be. Ideally, we'd like a bigger garden. We've got quite a small garden now, but I don't want to have a field at the back of the house. Okay. Uh, just because okay. you ain't going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the usual recipe, isn't it? We listen to what they want, we ignore what they want, we go hunting for the most suitable properties in their price range and location, and we browbeat them until they buy them. Very nicely put. Is it easy, this job, once you know how to do it. With contribution from Hardeep's mum, the family budget tops out at 430,000. Sounds like a lot, but we're searching an expensive territory. The family are after a detached four-bedroomed house on a quiet road in either Sutton or Harborne, and that's just for starting. Our second set of house hunters were first-time buyers, Helen Rackham and Paul Beckett. They had loved and lost three houses, all because they couldn't get over the buyer's biggest hurdle, the survey. As first-time buyers, they were fragile and a bit frightened, so it was down to us to hold their hand. We started looking for a house about a year ago. First-time buyers, we thought, oh, yeah, we've got no chain, we're renting, everything's yeah. ready to go, and it's just not been like that at all. It's just been a complete nightmare from start to finish, unfortunately. We know the problem for these two hasn't been finding a home. In fact, they've put offers in on three houses. 
but each time they've been scared off by some serious sounding surveys and pulled out. I trained as a surveyor and I've been evaluating properties for about 12 years now. I've yet to come across a problem that's completely insurmountable. You've got to remember that a surveyor's job is to identify anything that's wrong with the property. What you've got to do is work out what's serious and what's not. And we can't afford to take any chances with this cautious couple. Houses in Norwich are flying off the market, and with a working brief, I need to get straight on the case. Well, that's gone as well. You must have something you can tell me. While Phil pans the pavement, I'm off to get the finer details from Helen and Paul. But they want a house of their own, and a year of disappointments has left them at a low ebb. Paul, all this toing and throwing, the disappointment, the losing of the three properties, how does that make you feel about the process? Uh, really deflated, to be honest. Initially, with the first place, it was very um, exciting to find a place and sort of imagine yourself sitting around, how you'd have it laid out and that sort of thing. But one after the other, it's just sort of taking all the excitement away from the whole process completely. So what we've got to do is put the magic back into the search. Oh, definitely. But what about his better half? Time for a girls' chat. So you longing for your own house? Yeah, really badly. And we're just so desperate, we just want to start decorating and showing off our house. Yep. And every time we go to do that, it like goes wrong. <laughs> so. OK, well, I promised Paul that we would put the magic back into the search. Good. And I think for you, I think I can guarantee that we can find you a home to call your own. You may be confident, Kirsty, but I'm worried. Helen and Paul have got a budget of £165,000 and want a three-bedroom property no more than 20 minutes walk from Norwich city centre. Problem is, I can't find any three-bedroom properties in their price range. I think it's best if you show Helen and Paul our first property while I continue searching. Right, first up is a spacious two-bed terrace in a great spot. West of the city centre, staggering distance from the bars and only 15 minutes walk to work. But it's inside that really sells this house. Not only does it have two big bedrooms, but they've made fantastic use of the available space downstairs and created somewhere really stylish. And it's seven grand under budget. What they've done is something that's quite clever. They've used the side return of the house, often a wasted space, Oh for a kitchen. Wow. I, I love it. That's I just great. absolutely love it. It works very well. It's a yeah, clever it use of space. It's so unusual. And I think they will be just as impressed with the upstairs. Oh, More space, yes. Yeah, definitely. Put your head through there. This is nice, isn't it? Quality. Yeah, it's lovely. I really like it. Double thumbs up on the kitchen, everything downstairs. Great use of the space. And it's good value for money. Okay. The area as well. Yeah, just fingers crossed there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> they seem to be very reassured by my advice, which is great in one way, but puts a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. I'll be glad when Phil gets here tomorrow because we have got to convince them that they shouldn't be so cautious about surveys. But if we're wrong, we can have so much egg on our face, we'll be scrambled. This week we are catching up with not one, but two couples. A year ago we took on two tricky searches, one in Norwich and the other one in Sutton Coldfield. Both couples had great expectations at a time when neither could afford to be fussy, so it was down to us to rein them in. Debs and Hardy are expecting a lot of house for their money. We've got a budget of 430,000. Five beds. It's got to have a family kitchen. Two en suites. Long garden. Catchment area for the good schools. Eight, seven, five. Five uh -huh. bedrooms, six. Bedrooms. I'm not even close. With all those demands, so far we've drawn a blank in Harborn. There's just nothing suitable within budget. So we're starting the search in Sutton and straight away breaking one of their golden rules. This house is on a busy road, but with its generous frontage, it's well set back from the traffic. And I think its sheer size could show them what their budget has the potential to achieve. And you don't get views like this anywhere else in Sutton or Harborn, for that matter. On for £439,000, it's at the top of their budget, but the house has a lot to offer. Right, now, Deborah. first things first, what were you just saying? 
the road's a bit noisy. You, no, you chicken, you said no. Not a great start. Hope we haven't fallen at the first hurdle here, Kirsty. Have a bit of faith, Phil. I know the road's an issue, but they haven't seen the inside yet. This 1930s house has bags of character and all the space this family could need. At the back, there's a huge garden for the kids to play in and upstairs, I've got a nifty idea for Hardeep's mum, giving her and the family their own space. With everything it offers, they'd be daft to dismiss this house straight away. So what do you think of this kitchen then? It's gorgeous. Lovely floors, the original the floor's, floor's all stripped and polished up. Mm. And look at that garden. I am mighty keen on this house, as you probably noticed. <laughs> I can tell. I'm going to take you straight into the master bedroom, OK? And straight over to the window. Let's address this road issue from the top. It's a summer day. It's very quiet. It's very quiet. And that's why I was prepared to show it to you. And this house could really work for Hardeep's mum too. Here, yeah. lovely double bedroom. En suite shower room for your mother-in-law, connecting to a little sitting room. Whilst Kirsty works on convincing Debbie, I want to show Hardy the kind of lifestyle this house can offer. The sheer fact that this is here is great. Yeah. No one sets out saying, I want to live on a busy road, but no. quite a few people no. will go, I wouldn't mind living opposite a golf course and a sailing club, having a nice big garden and walking my kids to school. Sounds tempting to me, but have we scored a hole in one? Kirsty and I were very mindful of the fact, as you said, you didn't want to live yeah. on a road and we've taken you straight to a house on a road. The reasons, yeah. we hope, are quite clear. You were, I guess, perfectly within your rights to walk in and go, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Well, I did uh, think that when I walked up the drive. I thought, what? Weren't you listening? But you were <laughs> <laughs> I say that to fill the whole time. Weren't you listening? <laughs> She sends it to me all the time. But um, I do see Us exactly... Us have to do a lot of listening, don't we? <laughs> I do see exactly why you've done it. And it's it's not a no in my books. I don't think it's a no in your books, is it? No. No, no. It, it ticks a lot of boxes. But not exactly brimming with enthusiasm, Hardy. I suspect the busy road may be a deal-breaker here. Hopefully we'll have more luck with our next one. This stunning four-bed Victorian terrace is set bang in the middle of Boldmere, Hardeep's favourite area of Sutton Coalfield. It's perfect for schools and commuting. Although not on the same scale as the last house, this road couldn't be quieter. The figures add up too. On the market for 389950, it's well under budget. How does it strike you from the outside? There's no garage. Maybe you should have asked Deborah Kirsty. Garage or no garage, this house is stunning. Hardeep's mum could be very comfortable here with the space it has to offer. This place is being sold by two talented artists and it shows in the imaginative attention to detail. It's got four large bedrooms and two beautiful reception rooms, but it's the personal touches that really make this place shine. We know that Boldmere is Hardeep's ideal spot. Yes, yeah. Does it work quite as well for you? I mean, how far is it to your family? Driving, it's probably going to be a good 40 minutes or so. Um, and my mum doesn't drive, so she would probably have to get the train if she wanted to come and visit me. She can't just pop round, you know, it's got to be planned, really. Debs may be worried that she's too far from her family, but in Hardeep's book, this location's ideal, and that's not all it offers him. Now, Hardeep, we thought this might be where you and Deborah might want to hide out when the rigours of family life overcame okay. you. You've got lovely ensuite shower there. And then, this is a nice big room. Now, at the moment, obviously, it's got all the kids' clutter. Yeah, yeah. But if you put a double bed against that wall, it's a lovely, light, bright room. Yeah. And downstairs, you've got a really big room for your mum. But size is a matter of opinion. I think downstairs is possibly too small. Um, right. The, certainly the two living rooms are. Nice try, Kirsty, but I don't think we won these two over quite yet. I think that... Old-fashioned fussy. You know, we haven't come across that for a while. Just... What do you mean, old-fashioned fussy? Just fussy. Hi, you two. Hello. Hello. You Hello. had a good look round? Yes, we have. It's a no, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Just tell me, I think I already Sorry. know, but in one sentence, what is the primary reason for the fact that it's a no? It's not big enough. I thought we'd struck gold with this house. It's in Hardeep's ideal location and within budget. Hardeep and Deborah really need to start facing facts. I very much appreciate that space is your number one criteria. That's the motivation mm -hmm. for the move. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to 
weigh in with the location criteria as well. No, maybe we were being a bit too picky. I think... Uh, no, what, you? I think it's good that we wait out for the, for the right thing, but not <laughs> try to get... Abs- okay. I don't think we're going to get absolutely everything we want. <laughs> I think we realise <laughs> that. Do I. I think I realise that, but I think we can get most things we want. These two have such firm views, but with their budget, we're going to need a stroke of luck to find it. Luck, Phil? Blood, sweat and tears, more like. Debs and Hardy are tough nuts to crack, and it's no easier ride in Norwich with Helen and Paul. The next property I'm taking them to is one I found in West Norwich, an area we know they love, and they'll be pleased to discover that the walk to work is only 20 minutes door to door. You know, Phil, I must be mellowing in my old age. You're not old, darling. (laughs) No, seriously, because previously I'd have got hold of those two and shaken them up and said, right, you buy something which needs value adding. You didn't, you left them alone. No, I was sympathetic about their survey issue. I didn't accuse them of being wet and I did a lot of nice, comforting hand-holding. Well, you're going to need a bit of hand-holding here. This is the only three bed that I found within budget. I know, and it needs loads of work. (laughs) They're going to be scared to death. (laughs) (laughs) You're not mellowing at all, are you? Morning, guys. Morning. Hello. Hello. This is Phil. He's come along the ride. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. With Kirsty allegedly on her best behaviour, let's hope we can make them see that this house could work. With a bit of hard graft, they'd kill two birds with one stone. They'd get their three bedrooms and the opportunity to add value. It's on at £157,950. Now, Helen, through here, you've got your dining room. Lovely original fireplace. Nice fireplace. Yeah. Oh, tell me what you're thinking. Look at your no, little it's face. Just, no, it's, fine. it's just a bit... It's obviously different to yesterday, so I'm just adjusting and imagining... It is. it is. Like if I had my stuff in it and I painted it and got rid of... Yeah. The fills. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not that bad. You should see some of the stuff Phil and I see. Now, this is the biggest bedroom, Paul. In fact, oh, I think wow. it's probably the biggest bedroom on the street. Yeah, it's massive. Isn't it? uh, and the reason for that is because this area here is above the passage, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that from that side, actually. It's got to be a bonus. A huge yeah, second it's... bedroom. There's a loo and a shower en suite. Great. But in here is the third bedroom. This is where you could put bathroom, you could put dressing room. Yeah, I really like the size of it, actually. I really like the idea of just sort of having a play and making it use, use of the space and that sort of thing. I'm really positive about this one. Great. I'm not sure what Helen thinks, but we'll, yeah, well, that, that we'll might find be, out. It might be the stumbling block there. Yeah, what? indeed. So Paul's interested in adding value. Good man. But I'm not so sure about Helen. I think she's after the finished product. For what it's on for, it's on for quite a lot. And I, I just don't think we've got the time to sort of take it on. That's so I wouldn't mind, it. but I think you want someone you just want to move into and live in, don't you? I'm not Do keen on it, but if you want to have a think about it. Chairs were a good idea, weren't they? Yeah, you look very comfortable. Well, we visit Sat so many back, vacant properties. Enjoying yourselves, leaving it all up to me to do the work, <laughs> ring the agents, I'm not take the notes. All to you. Anything else? Can I get you lunch? <laughs> Does yours say slave on the back? Mine says master. They're not going to go for this house. You do know that, don't you? How did it get you, Sam? I mean, who's going to make this decision? Is it a joint decision or is it Helen's decision? It's Helen's decision. Yeah, definitely. It's almost the word. I'm going to have to have a word with Paul. <laughs> Beef him up a bit. It's not fair on you, so we'll no, have no. a look. We'll have a chat about it. I think we'll... Um... Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Cool. I'll just go off and cry in a corner now. <laughs> well, we've given it our best shot. Three bedrooms within budget, but Helen's the boss and she's knocked it on the head. If doing up houses isn't going to float Helen's boat, then we've got the best finished house on the market. It's in the city centre and came on yesterday at 159,950. Five grand under their budget, and we're the first through the door. This is is lovely. It's really finished and nice. Oh, God. Just the way you like Just the way you like it. <laughs> All done. All done. You are a projector bunny, aren't you? Yeah, but how much is it? Because this is really close to work, really close to the city. It came on the market yesterday at 159,950. But there is a flood of people who want to get in yeah, and see it. Yeah, we are holding them off with a big stick. It's a good price. Very good price. Yeah, I think it is. You actually. haven't seen around the house yet. You've just walked in and thought, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, it's really but funny. Yeah. I just thought it was going to be a fortune from the outside and because of where it is. The owner has created a fantastic home. Two big reception rooms, a stylish kitchen, two double bedrooms, and I've got a little surprise that's going to enchant Helen. 
I don't know whether you'll go for this kind of walk-in closet arrangement. Oh no, you are kidding. Yes, I'm kidding. Oh, oh my god. That's just so cool. Wow. This is just to be my dream area. This is exactly what I wanted in a house. At the last house, Paul was eager to add value. But for a man afraid of surveys, has he got the bottle? This is a joint decision. You both got to be happy. And if your drive and your motivation is to, you know, climb up the ladder, make some money, then we need to hear about that. Yeah, that's definitely where I'm coming from. Then this is the wrong house. Yeah, I think it is. Paul seems to think that you and he could do this in a house. That you could spend £20,000 and make it your own and add yeah. the value yourself. No way, he's just dreaming. We like just enjoying our life and we're not in the mood So to... what makes Paul think that he's capable of, of this type of project? Testosterone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little something in the garden that'll keep Paul sweet. Come and have a look at this. It's, it's currently being used as a beautician's um, oh, right. room. Goes right through. Oh, back here as well. Blimey. Could be a boy's room. You could set your decks up there. Yeah. Get away from Helen. Make plenty of noise. That look, that's really good. I really like that. Well, no need to ask you <laughs> too much about what you like about <laughs> that, because it's written all over your faces. It's just yeah, it's really unbelievable. amazing. It's everything we've ever wanted, isn't it? Everything is new and nice and clean and lovely, and I well, want it. it. There's not a lot you can add to it, but it's great anyway. I love, I love that every part of it. I think you'll get over it, though, won't you? Yeah. The shed. I don't think you're going to give him the moment's choice. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll get over it, won't you? <laughs> but it is important in, in, in any house, so you don't get too emotionally involved. It's not yours till you actually sign late. it. I'll probably cry. Well, <laughs> you've been down this road before. You have been down this road before. It's not a... Two or three times. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, dear me. We're going to have to hold her down with some string, I think. String? Or like some heavy-duty cable. We're headlong into a search in Sutton Coalfield for the Burmy family. They need to find a bigger house for themselves, the kids and grandma. But their differing opinions on the right location have so far got me beat. Buck up, Phil. This search isn't over yet. The key to Deborah's heart is getting her closer to her family. Time to give the girl what she wants. We're moving the search over to the other side of Brum, to the upmarket area of Harborn. It's a fantastic place to live with great schools, beautiful parks and stunning houses. Living the high life doesn't come cheap. But I've just had a call from an agent with some interesting news. This six-bedroom period property was on the market at a cool half a million. But it seems the developer may need some cash and it's just had a whopping 50 grand knocked off the price tag. With some clever dealing, I think this could be within the Burmese reach. And that could make Deborah a very happy woman. So, Debs, you're really the reason why, we've, why we're here. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. You can't be far from your, your family. No, no, ten minutes. Ten, minute ten walk. minutes? God, ten Hardy, minute you're walk. a brave man. Live with your own mum and live ten minutes from your mum-in-law. <laughs> he hasn't said he'd do it yet. <laughs> but it all works, it but all works. But many men wouldn't even consider that. I think it looks really nice. OK, and let's get in here. It's okay. a quieter cool. road. It is a quieter road, yep, yep. Compared to Sutton, you don't usually get as much for your money in Harbin. But I think this house is a real find. It's a period property that's just had a shiny new makeover. Spread out over three floors, Hardeep's mum would be spoilt for choice with any of these generous bedrooms. And it doesn't end there. <laughs> okay. Who wanted space? <laughs> Who wanted a big family kitchen? <laughs> oh, my God. Holy moly. What you have here is Granny's room. Formal reception room, large family kitchen, oh gosh, playroom yeah. conservatory, and downstairs laundry room. This is bang on. Because the kids there. Bang on. Me here. No, the kids. No, the no, kids no. are in the, the kids are in, the kids their are in the own playroom. Room. Beyond. Oh, have they? Come, look, come, you, come you know, the kids. The kids aren't in the kitchen. So no. that okay, sort of comfy in. seating area. This then is there's where a dining. Oh, I was going to say you can have a sofa there. Yeah. yeah. A sofa yeah. here. And then kids. Kids are in here. Oh wow. Straight oh, to the big, garden. Biggest garden we've come across. It is big. That, it, it's room it, for your little den or something down the end. This is a bit of a wow for me. Hardy doesn't get wowed. 
I don't think Debs thought we'd oh, ever what? find her anything like this in Harborn. Oh, my God! <laughs> We're not going to be able to afford this. Oh, it's got everything, this house. It is the mutt's nuts. <laughs> if they don't buy it, I will eat your hat. So, are you two still impressed? Yes, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. impressed. Yeah. Really like it. Yeah, really yeah. like it. Well, let's, let's split up, keep exploring. Oh, boss, boss, boss. Oh. Debs, come and see the master bedroom suite with me. OK. Hardy, we'll head up to the top. OK, brilliant. Keeps going, this house. It's narrow, yeah. the garden, but it's very long. Well, I'd rather have length, to be honest, than width. Cos I want... Even the accountant in Hardy is starting to melt. I think I'm definitely thinking with my heart at the moment, cos I love the house. I've got to say, when I walked in, I didn't think I would. Um, but I do. Um, garage or no garage, it's great. The location of this house couldn't be better for Deborah. What kind of difference would it make to your life being a mile away from your mum? No, really, really good. Especially now with Hardy's mum, I realise that I'm relying on my mum a lot more. Yeah. Hardy's mum was fully capable of looking after the children or just oh, helping us out. Yeah. Yeah. And we could just leave them there and run off for a couple of hours and come back. But now, unfortunately, she's not. Thank God I've got my mum, because yeah. that's what I mean, exactly. That she's, you know, she's there for me. Quite a place, isn't it? Definitely. And um, every room I went into, I just really loved. But I haven't seen one where I've walked in like this and I've gone, wow, wow, yeah. wow, and no, I'll just... Nor have I, to be fair. And I think I'm very much thinking with my heart. I need to think with my head. <gasps> You're not, are you? Yeah. <laughs> where did you find that? <laughs> <laughs> in my back pocket. <laughs> no, but, uh... Success at last. Not so fast, Kirsty. Harborn may have been a big hit, but the reality is it's still 20 grand over budget. This last house is back in Sutton, where you get a lot more for your money. It's a five-bedroomed house on the market for just under 420,000. 30 grand cheaper than the Harborn house and comfortably back in budget. It's on a quiet road, has a huge garden and real scope to add some value. That should appeal to Hardeep. Inside, the house needs a little updating, but is in great shape and it's huge. With £10,000 left in the kitty, the Burmies could create the perfect home. For an extended family desperate for more space, this house really would be a sensible option and a great buy. Now here we are, straight into the sitting room. Oh, this is nice. Oh, it is. It's lovely. So oh, Hardy, look at the garden. This is the bit of the winner. That garden's lovely. Isn't it? It's beautifully maintained and most okay. private. You could sunbathe with no clothes on in there and no one would be it's any the worse. It's really nice. Being back in Sutton means you get a lot of bricks for your bucks. Debbie would be happy with Harborn. There's no questions about that. And is that worth 10 grand more? In Debbie's eyes, it's definitely worth more than 10 grand more. In my eyes, I would like to go away and think about it. Well, that's fine. We're not going to. We're not going to pull your fingernails out if you don't make a decision that's now. That's not what you said earlier. Debbie was so won over by the last house. I want to find out if her heart's even made it through the front door. If I'd seen that house in Sutton, I would be a bit, oh, it's in Sutton, I wish it was in Harborn, but I think I'd still have to go for it, because I love it. Therefore, you're admitting you're not actually giving this the time of day. No. <laughs> I just even, like to follow you around. <laughs> even though, thank you very much. Once you've known him as long as I have, Debs, the novelty wears off, believe me. This is a great house with a real investment potential. Mm. But at the end of the day, Deborah is allowing Hardeep's mum to move in with them. So he is going to let her live near her mum. Mm, I agree. Let's just hear your combined thoughts on this house. This is a big house um, with a big garden. It's got, yeah. it's got the garage, it's got the driveway, and it's on for less money. I know you're going to kill me for saying this, but I just feel like it's too quiet here. Spend the evening thinking about it. You only need one house. Sounds like these two have got a lot of thinking to do. In Norwich, we're desperately trying to keep Helen's feet on the ground. She's fallen head over heels for this two-bed city centre property. They think it's their dream house, but what about that third bedroom? And with their history of bad luck with surveys, we need to keep their options open. At last, my hard work has paid off. I found a fabulous three-bedroom house in West Norwich, 15 minutes walk into the city centre. The only downside is the price. At 175, it's 10,000 over budget. I'm not sure the extra room is worth the money, but will they? The last thing, the question I want to do is stretch your budget, but no. this is kind of what you asked us to find. Yeah, yeah. no, no, that's no, no, fair no, enough. Let's, Ooh, yeah. let's promise from the outside. Okay. Yeah, definitely. 
Inside is lovely. It was renovated two years ago, so all the work has been done, which will keep Helen happy. In fact, it's everything they've asked us to find. But will it wow them? Do you get that same feeling you got in the last house? No. Well, no feeling at all? I'm quite loyal. To the last house? Yeah, I feel like I'm cheating on it if I compliment this one too much. Why didn't you go upstairs and cheat on Paul with Phil? Come and on, Paul. <laughs> we better go upstairs. Are you running away from me? <laughs> I'm left on my own. I thought my luck was in. Despite Phil's best efforts, Helen's heart really does belong to the last house. But does Paul feel the pull? So, seeing this house confirms your feelings about the previous one? Definitely. Comparing the prices, I'm not really sure. I would I would pay the extra for the third bedroom when, like I say, we've got the shed at the other place, which yeah. will handle our storage needs. Yeah. So Paul doesn't think the third bedroom is worth the extra cash. Will Helen? This is the third bedroom. Right. Which is small. Yeah, it is very small. <laughs> but bear in mind, this is actually what you asked us to find. This is the three-bedroom Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, and I think I'd rather stick with the two generous-sized bedrooms. Good call. That's all you need. This is a nice house, but it's not for them. Um, I'm worried because we've got to make sure that there is nothing wrong with that house tomorrow. No, I don't think that's right. There's something wrong with every house. What we have to do is educate them that no house is perfect. Next morning, we return to the city centre house that Helen's got her heart set on. We may be first through the door, but with a bottleneck of viewings, we need to work hard to get it before anyone else crosses the threshold. I've spotted a potentially serious problem with the house that would go beyond minor survey quibbles. They've had more than their fair share of survey scares, and we've got to make absolutely sure this one's going to pass, so I'm getting a second opinion. I've arranged to meet a surveyor here to have a bit of a cast around the structure. Oh, so oh excellent. You, you go on in. I hope it's not depressing. <laughs> well, cross your fingers. Helen and Paul need to have a good scout around and make a list of what fixtures and fittings they'd like to be included in their offer. Oh, it still looks nice. Yeah, I do like that wall. Yeah, you want to make a note of that blind? Do you still like it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hope it's going OK with that surveyor. I really do, because it's going to break their hearts if there's a problem with this house. Unfortunately, it's not looking good. There's a big crack in the gable end, which could be a major problem. It may be that um, previous owners have uh, information from engineers, or it may be that there's been insurance claims. That, that sort of paperwork would be helpful. Hi. That's not a happy face. No, it's not happy news either. There's been structural movement down the side wall. All houses of this age move a bit. Most of this terrace is actually moved when I've looked up and down the front. This well, is not what we needed for this couple. Potentially, it's quite a serious issue. Try and stay calm. I just want to get excited, but every time I get excited, I just keep thinking, oh, it's all going to go wrong. It'll be a miracle if this is all right, because it's too perfect at the minute. They love this house. <laughs> Can't we just run now? Do we have to be the ones that tell them this? This could be the fourth time. <laughs> no, 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 don't say that, no. Hello. Hi, Hi there. Um, we've got, got something, something we need to show you. Okay. All right. It's Come not. It's not. It's not a big worry. It's a little concern, uh, and it's think, something we think we can overcome. The vendors have lived here for six years, right? And they had it surveyed when they bought it, and just before they bought it, there'd been some movement in the house. The bricks from here had been taken out of these new ones. You can see the new bricks. Oh yeah, you can yes. see the line going up. Right. Okay. My worry is that within the last six years there's been additional movement. You see how that brick has cracked straight through the middle? Yeah. yeah. That's not a good sign. What we need to establish is who the existing insurance company are okay. and whether they would be happy to continue cover. OK. Right, if okay. it's not insurable, it's not mortgageable. Oh, oh Helen, don't! don't. It, it's going to be OK. Hey, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Don't cry. Yeah. I still want to go ahead on it, though. Yeah, yeah I do, I definitely. Yeah. It's a setback, but nothing is insurmountable, and we're determined to make this house work for them. We need to gather together any paperwork related to the crack and get guarantees from their mortgage company that they'll insure it. I've spoken to the vendor and I've got some paperwork from when they bought the property and going back, actually going back 14 or 15 years, it's been insured by 
actually the place where you work oh, right, since yeah. then. And they've been happy to continue cover oh, that's, the whole way that's through. Good news. That's a huge relief, but our job's not done. Now we need to focus on securing the property. Let's talk about the money. It's on the market at 159950 159 feels expensive, but it, it also feels that someone's going to pay, for pay it within the not too distant future. I know what you're saying, it does feel a little expensive, but for the, the quality of the fitting the fixtures inside, I think I think we'd happily pay that. No, to be honest, I'd rather go in at asking price and then get a load of stuff thrown in. I do have an offer for you. It would most definitely require complete exclusivity. So it is, it is strictly under those terms that they will pay the asking price. Thank you very much. We can't, we can't say further than that. They've offered the price, yeah. we've given it to them. Sadly, we couldn't get an immediate answer, but the agent promises to call in the morning. Hi, Phil, how are you? Have you had a sleepless night? Yes, we're getting quite stressed out at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Property's off the market. Who accepted the offer? Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. What a result. Let's see if we can do the same in Sutton Coalfield. Finding a house to fit three generations hasn't been easy. Debs and Hardy have had the evening to think, and next morning you'll never guess what. Here we are back in Harborn. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Debbie won. Thoughts overnight, Debbie won, clearly. Yeah, of course I won. It's not a war, Phil. It's not a matter of who wins no. and who loses. We agreed together, didn't we? Yep. Whatever you say, Deborah. This house is 20 grand over budget, but we think we could get it for less. Debs's happiness has got to be worth the extra money. One of the main reasons for the move was to bring Hardeep's mother into the family, and Hardeep's already got ideas. So we're only coming up one flight of stairs. Yeah, we're only coming up one flight of stairs. I think we probably said that we, you know, we try, try to give her her own space, but at the same time, mm. we're trying to get her integrated into in, in with us and. She's already a big part of the family and sure. it, it's, it's important for the kids that they grow up with her. And I don't want her to just sort of be there and make out like she's in the way, she's not in the way. Yeah. And that really is a main goal. Great. And I think that this house achieves that. Yeah. Whenever you buy a newly developed property, it's important to draw up a good snagging list. Any serious problems must be sorted out before exchange. I noticed the first time we came there were a couple of cracks up there. Cracks like that wouldn't bother me. Girl after my own heart. It's quite normal, isn't that it? That is quite normal. I think you just want to make sure that they've got the documentation which says that's properly supported. Yeah, OK. So we'll just put one beam on window. After a thorough inspection, Debs and I head off to find the boys. We're done and dusted. No Hello. problems at all. We've been talking about numbers and... Well, we've been doing a very detailed snagging list. We've been talking about cracks. Have you yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure we want to know about that, but um, okay, um, I think it's time that um, we went and found somewhere a bit warmer, maybe yeah, with a glass yeah. or two in yes, front of us. Please. Phil, make a beeline for the bar. Oh, so surprising. We came up here not too confident that we could find it, but we've surpassed ourselves, Kirst. He's a smug guest, isn't he? Yeah. No, you did you did great finding the house in Harbin. Would you like to go ahead and make an offer on the Harbin house? I think that goes without saying. Yeah. yeah. I did want to make an offer. Their top limit is £430,000. They're prepared to offer their max. OK. Bye. I feel like I'm going to go and sit an exam. It's difficult to wait, isn't it? We're trying to buy this house from a couple of developers. They're going to be after the cold, hard cash. Even though we put in a firm offer at 20 grand under the asking price, they're going to play a tough game. It's impossible to tell which way this is going to go. Debs and Hardy have fallen in love with the six bedroom period home in Harbin, and they are desperate to secure it. We've put in an offer of 20 grand under the asking price, and the waiting's been unbearable. James. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> James, can you just do this for me? I had another offer. Can you leave the offer on the table? Okie doke. Thanks, James. The vendor has said he won't accept less than 440. What we have to pin our hopes on is that they're calling our bluff. Mm. Yeah. And when we don't move and we leave the offer there, they go, actually, 430 is not bad, let's take yeah. it. 
know Debbie feels gutted right now. Sure. But no, Debbie, this is just the first step. Day. Promise yeah. me. I'd I know, I know, I know, but we've been looking so long. I know, I know. it's been taken away. It hasn't, it hasn't been taken, been taken away. away. It hasn't been taken, taken away. away. We found it and we're going to get it. Yeah. It's going to be okay. fun. All right. A week on and with no word from the vendors, Hardeep and Debs make one last attempt to secure the Harbin house. They stretch their offer by another £8,000. And I'm delighted to say the developer accepts their offer. But just when we thought it was in the bag, Debs and Hardy were dealt a vicious blow. We got a survey done on everything, um, and there was just lots, lots of things wrong, weren't there? There was a huge snag list which I had to complete, basically. Yeah, and they weren't. And uh, they wouldn't do a snag list. They wouldn't turn up to talk to us. Uh, Nobody would communicate with us, and in frustration we gave up. With the Harbin house fallen through, they were forced back to the search. It took them a further five months to finally find a house that they were happy with. Well, at least one of them was. Twelve months on, they're in Sutton Coalfield, Hardeep's favourite location, but not Deb's first choice. Throughout the search, she was adamant she didn't want to live in Sutton. And for a while there, she got her way. But it looks like the tables are turned, and it's this four-bed Victorian semi that's won her round. And who could blame her? It's absolutely stunning. It's gorgeous for the park. It's really close. The schools are really close for us as well. And both the boys, thankfully, have settled in really, really well. My mum's further away. Um, but to be honest, I still drive over and see her every weekend. So in a way, and I hate to say it, Hard Eat was right. It has got everything really that we need. With two reception rooms, four bedrooms and three bathrooms, there is heaps of space for Burmese young and old. And the figures add up too. They bought the house for £398,000, 32 grand under budget. But just as well, because this wasn't the finished project they were after. This house did have to have a lot more work done it compared to the Harborn house. We've decorated it from top to bottom. We've made a lot of changes to the first and second floor. In the master bedroom, they have knocked through a wall into what used to be an office and created their own ensuite bathroom. And they have also made some major changes to Hardeep's mum's room. We've changed the roof, um, so the ceilings have been raised. And we've put in uh, an ensuite as well. It just makes it feel like a big room and my mum's got you know everything she needs here. But with all they had going on, I can't imagine it's been easy. It was a bit of a bind because, to be honest, we had to move out of our... We had to sell two houses and we had to move into a rented house and it was a nightmare. All the hard work, all the stress, all of us being cramped together in a little house, it was worth it because now they've each got their own fantastic room. Hardeep's mum's got her own bathroom and her own lovely bedroom and we've got a great big house and everything's cool. They've worked their socks off and turned this house into a home for themselves, the kids and Hardeep's mum. That's three generations under one roof. It looks like everyone's a winner here. They spent 16000 on the renovations and in the six months since they bought the house, they've increased its value to £425,000. That's £27,000 more than they bought it for. Who accepted the offer? Oh, what? Superb. Oh, that's great. But what about Helen and Paul? Last time we saw them, they were skipping over rainbows. But just when we thought we'd secured them the house of their dreams, the unimaginable happened. The vendors of the property pulled out the day before they were due to exchange, leaving the deal and Helen and Paul in tatters. It was an absolute disaster and their fourth house to have gone wrong, reeling from the blow they were forced to move on. But I'm delighted to say this tenacious duo wouldn't be beaten. And it's this cracking two-bed terrace that set their hearts aflutter. Just 15 minutes walk into town and still staggering distance from the bars and restaurants that they love. They bought the house for 131 grand, which seems pretty inexpensive to me. What's the catch? So after that deal bit the dust, how long did it take to find this? We sort of looked at hundreds more houses, but we just nothing seemed to do it for us. And then I got a text about this one, and we came round, and it was... Yeah, it, just... Instant. Yeah, well, Basically, we thought, well, OK, it'll be a case of stripping off the paper, then putting the bathroom upstairs. What? I know. <laughs> Yeah, they were, yeah, but it had to do a bit more than just paint the walls. Moving bathrooms? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think... What about uh, kitchens and things? Yeah, we extended the kitchen. Helen! I know. <laughs> yeah. Call what? me DIY expert now. <laughs> what went on here? 
I'm impressed and amazed in equal measure. This house is stunning. With cool contemporary colours and a stylish new kitchen, Helen's decorative touches have worked wonders. Upstairs there are two double bedrooms and a huge bathroom. How long did it all take? It took about six months in the end. When you agreed to buy it, what did you think it was going to be a couple of weeks' work whilst living <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, we were literally that, that naive. All these projects come down to planning. Yeah. Pr proper planning before you yeah. actually set out. <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't a lot of that, to be honest. A year ago, I had no chance of getting Helen upstairs with me. It looks like she really has changed, and in more ways than one. But I remember Kirsty and I saying, you can do this, you can, you can make a house nice and clean and lovely, but you wouldn't have it. I know, and everyone keeps reminding me of that, but... <laughs> so you genuinely did get your hands dirty, then you were there putting in the grout. Yeah, I put in the grout, I took paper off walls, I glossed. Peed in a bucket, we had no loo. <laughs> did the works. <laughs> you really you really are a changed woman, aren't you? I know. It was it was pretty horrible at some points. As ever, I've been doing my research and I've got some interesting news for them. So you paid one three one for it. Mm -hmm. Ten months on, if that went on the market today, I'm told by the local agents it would go on about one six three. Oh really? lovely. That's good news. That's, That's nice. great news, actually. So you made a bit yeah. of profit. Yeah. Seventy p. No. You didn't spend that much. No. On that, <laughs> did you? Seventy p. I guess the drinks are on me then. It is. It's been terrific coming back to see you. Happy, settled, great home. I'm still kind of shocked, <laughs> but also dead proud, particularly of you, Helen. Would you do it all again? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. No, I don't. No. I don't think so. Not, not to that ex extent. Not with that. Well, I don't. I don't no, know, no, we, we wouldn't. Yeah, right. That's what you said the first time. Both couples have proved when house hunting, if you can be sure of one thing, it's that you can't be sure of anything. But, but if you're prepared to adapt and to persevere, you might just end up with the home of your dreams. <laughs>